Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're on another What's Wrong With This One. The car today is Volvo V40. I think, I don't even know what it is. Uh, D4, design of some shit. A diesel Volvo 2016 model. Uh, complaint is a non-start. Now I've just come to turn the key. It did fire up first time and ran for about five or ten seconds and when I've gone to try and pull out of this space yeah it's just died on me and now I'll just try and show you what it's doing it feels to me like the, maybe the st start buttons a bit faulty what what's happening I'm sorry so 62,000 miles and yeah it's like I don't know it's like I'm lifting the button early when I'm not lifting the button early. Come, it did come up immobiliser on the dash before. So, I think we'll get the scanner. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Don't, don't. Yeah, we'll get the scanner and see what, see if that points us in a direction. Right, so it's a two litre this one. V40, two litre diesel. That one there I think we'll go for. Uh, apparently it's come from another garage and they've said it there was seven or eight undocumented fault codes. I might do a full a full code scan rather than just the engine because you know it could be immobiliser related now EGR I've had an issue with one of them it was on a Citroen C5 and that wouldn't start either um, yeah I think the EGR was stuck in the open position so it was just chucking exhaust gases back into the inlet and obviously not, if, not enough oxygen in there to uh, yeah, ignite the diesel. So that could be a possibility. Now I haven't looked at the exhaust yet when it's cranking. Well, it doesn't really crank, does it? But would that start? That might have been a similar thing. It was a few years ago now. Yeah, but that's, yeah, could be a reason why we're getting no throttle response. Okay. Yeah. I think I made a blanking plate up for that. Yeah on that Citroen, made a blanking plate up, just to see, yeah, whether it'd then run, run nicely with the EGR taken out of the equation, and it did. Could do the same for this. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Although that was pretty easy to get to on that, oh shit, Citroen. Not sure where they are on this. So, only one cord in engine. I think we'll go for EGR, some something or other, shall we? Anti-lock brakes, undocumented. Right, well that's a full code scan done. Um, yeah, eleven systems detected. There's only really one or one fault in most of them. Two in that central electric module. Um, Anti-lock brakes, I'm not asked about that. Undocumented code. Position light, not bothered about that. Um, we'll see what happens with that one. But I don't think I'm too fussed about that. Power steering unit, not bothered. So yeah, it looks like I'm leaning towards EGR. Which, I've just been under the bonnet and there is a clicking. Which is coming from sort of down the turbo area. I'll go and take you out now. I'm not sure if whether the EGRs are down there. I've not really done much on these these two litre Volvos. We'll go and have a look. Well, that's with the ignition on. There's a clicking from down there somewhere. Can't see. I'll strip some covers off and see what we can see. 
but yeah, I'm leaning towards that EGR. Let's get to it and do a bit of testing. Right, I've been workshop now. Just taking this pipe off from that EGR down there into the inlet manifold. And it's been starting nicely. So we'll just try it again. We did have the boost pack on it, but we'll try without. There we go. Obviously reduced performance because it's detected that there's no EGR circulation or some shit. Get one priced. Hopefully get it fitted. Then strip the EGR off in the cooler. And what I've found is this lower section of this cooler is blocked solid. I've run some thinners through this top section and that, that bit does fill up. But the bottom section is blocked solid. And I've uh, plugged the EGR back in and gone through uh, the actuator test for the EGR valve. Uh, and the EGR valve is operating, it's opening and closing. So I'm going to go and say that cooler is the fault. Now I did quote on the EGR valve and it was... I think 450 plus the VAT, plus obviously labour and a diagnostic scan. Doesn't come with the cooler, that is separate from the cooler and that's about 380. So my local motor factor can't get them. That's from main dealer. I'm going to order that because they have it on the shelf. Fit it, see what happens and then uh, yeah, go from there. If it needs the EGR, I'll have to give her a ring, let her know the crap. Okay, so we've just been on a bit of a test drive. It drives well. Yeah, drives well. I don't know if there's one at front tyres is a bit flat. The steering's a bit, you know, a bit wallowy. Don't know, it doesn't really go where you point it. Uh, but yeah, not bad, not bad. Obviously, it's revving up now. And I'm hoping when I knock it off, it's going to start back up on the button. Yes. So that'll do for me. Uh, we'll get it back now. Get an invoice done for the customer. It's not going to be cheap. Um, I think the EGR valve was £440 plus the VAT and it doesn't come with the cooler. The cooler was separate and it was about 380 I think, so yeah. Not gonna be uh not gonna be a cheap cheap bill, but 2016 plate car, I don't think it's worth scrapping over, you know. Well, it's gonna be less than a thousand quid, isn't it, to sort it. So it could be worse, but it's, do you expect to be spending that on a five-year-old car? Who knows? Anyway, that's enough. See you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.